In our previous episode, we drove to Valbay to look at our temporary boat that we will live on. A couple of days later, Johan and our friend Adam started sailing Utricula south towards Malmö. We woke up to a sunny morning with blue skies and the weather for the day looked promising. Our goal was to sail the 44 nautical miles down to Helsingborg and arrive before darkness. Are you ready? Yeah. sailing now. We have, uh, yeah, I don't think this is accurate, but maybe around 60 to 70 knots of wind. And we're going upwind for a bit now, and we're going to um, round, go around Kullen, it's called over here, it's a cape, before we're heading more to the south, down in Elvesund. The blue skies didn't last very long, but the sailing was good and we made decent speed most of the time. During the last part of the leg, the wind had dropped quite a bit, but we made it to the city marina just in time before sunset. So it's Friday morning. We're in Helsingborg. We're about to leave to sail to Malmö, but it's raining today, so it should stop around noon. Right now we have maybe 10 to 12 knots of wind from the west, so it could be a nice sail. It's uh, around 28 nautical miles down to Malmö. So in most marinas here in the southern part of Sweden you pay with an app on your phone to pay your harbor fees or you pay in uh, yeah, just a machine. So it's pretty convenient. You don't have to go to an office to check in or anything like that. You just log into the app or you pay in these machines. And then you get the receipt and you just uh, put that on the boat, like this. And then of course they will come and check if you have paid. But I guess this late in the season, they don't because we're the only guest boat in the marina. So after you have paid, you just put this slip on the boat. You're done.
Johan. Yeah. What's the biggest difference between sailing here and the Pacific? Um, yeah, definitely the, the seas, the waves. You don't have that uh, background swell pumping all the time like you have on the big ocean. You have smaller waves, shorter. Um, smaller whales as well? Yeah, smaller whales as well. Tumlare. And uh, I guess the wind is a bit more uh, variable in direction and speed. Uh, because you don't have this big, massive, high pressure. It's more... Yeah. The wind direction doesn't last very long here. <laughs> <laughs> then also because you're sailing close to land here between Denmark and Sweden, the wind speed goes up and down quite a lot. Gusty winds. Uh, and it's shallow. You have to uh, look at the sharks. <laughs> What's the depth here? Uh, right now I think we have around 20 meters, but just uh, one nautical mile in that direction is only 2.5. So you have to take care. Mm. Um, and the distances aren't very far. You can, between the different harbors and marinas, you can sail for two to three hours and you're in the next marina or port and you don't anchor very much here of course you don't do that on the west coast of the US either but uh, yeah down here in the south there's not a lot of anchorages you have to go further, further to the north on the west coast of Sweden to the archipelago to have uh, good anchorages so down here it's mostly old fishing harbors that you yeah go into and it's colder <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can tell yeah but it's it's pretty okay today it's slightly overcast but still it's not very cold I think we have around what do you think 15 16 maybe mm, something Six like it Celsius. Um, it rains a lot here it's uh, Skåne it always <laughs> rains <laughs> But we're lucky now. It rained this morning, but uh, now it's nice. Good. We had quite. Oh, we got some sun. Yeah, now we have some sun. But of course, in the summertime here, you have the long days. The sun goes up at four, maybe, and goes down at I don't know half past ten in the evening, eleven. So you have really long days. But of course, in the winter time, it's the opposite. You don't have any. So the season is very short. We have maybe three months of long season here and if you're lucky I mean the last couple of years it's been really nice summers but it's not uncommon to that you only have maybe two to three weeks of good weather in the whole summer so you have to have some some luck as well to pick the right weeks for your vacation if you want to sail around here so that's not very easy As we entered Malmö and Dockan Marina, we got caught by a big rain shower. Dockan is a really protected marina and the water is pretty much always flat like in a pond. Marlin was waiting for us at the dock and later Camilla, Adam's wife, came and joined us. Yeah. Welcome on board. Thanks so much. <laughs>
welcome to our temporary home. We're on board Utriculus now and we've been here for a couple of days now living aboard. We've settled in and I wanted to give you a quick tour of the boat. So as you probably know this is a Genoa Sun Odyssey 42DS. That's the whole like brand and make. So the production brand is Genoa, that's a French company, one of the biggest in the world of uh, manufacturing sailboats. Uh, 42 feet long and DS stands for Dexalon. It's not really a Dexalon because then it would be more in two levels, uh, but I think from the big windows in here in the salon, uh, you have a lot of light coming in and it's a bit uh, raise the floor. I think that's why they call it a big salon. So now we're here just down the companionway where you come down from the cockpit. The galley has a really nice layout we both think because it's nice with an L shape um, and for being pretty small you still have a lot of work places. You can cover this up the sinks so you have a full work place here, work area. Uh, it's nice with two sinks, um, fits a lot of uh, dishes <laughs> and plates and they're quite uh, close to the center line of the boat which means that when you're heeled over they don't take in water through uh, the through hulls as easy as if they would be really close to uh, um, the hull. What else? The fridge is super nice. We have to say it's like one of the nicest fridges we've seen on a boat. It's huge. It's so, so big. It's big. Two baskets here. So you can turn to the side and you have big areas underneath. You have this area and it goes pretty far in. Like almost my whole arm fits in there. And then there is a little uh, uh, freezer box. Uh, you can't keep ice uh, ice cream in there, it won't uh, keep the cold, but uh, some other stuff actually. You can make you can make ice. So this is super nice. We have some uh, storage behind here. Microwave, two burner stove with an oven, gimbal stove, some storage underneath for um, pots and pans. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then underneath the floorboards are also a lot of uh, storage. It's quite deep actually, it's like this deep. Uh, so the owners, uh, Susanna and Christian, they keep some of their food down here. And The boat has two cabins, um, which is a bit more unusual for this um, brand or this model. Uh, it normally has two aft cabins and one um, V-berth, but this one has a V-berth and a master cabin, which I will show you now. So if we go back here, you will see a massive bed, the biggest bed I've ever seen and slept in. It's two meters times two meters, so you can sleep in either direction because <laughs> you will fit. So this cabin is the whole width of the boat. You have a bit less headroom because above us is the cockpit. But you still fit well in there, you can sit up. Super comfy bed. Closets hanging and with... Uh, shelves and you have some storage on the sides of the bed and well you can store things and then you have storage in this one as well if we continue here uh, we come into the master head or bathroom and it actually has two doors so you can enter both from the master cabin and from the salon In the master head we have a shower, a toilet, and a sink and mirror 
with some storage behind and underneath. So you shower here. Navigation area on the uh, port side of the boat, just in front, in front of the main head and next to the companionway. You have some storage underneath the table where you can keep some important stuff. A little bit of storage here. You can have, they have some um, paper charts. You can have the logbook. Uh, instrument panel, plotter, VHF, speaker for the VHF, I guess. And then underneath the seat, more storage. And then you have a little area down here and we keep our shoes underneath the table. This is my new work area on this boat. Uh, I sit on the Pilates ball as we call it in Swedish. It's really comfortable because you get some movement into the body now and the body is changing a lot and belly is growing and you have pain in new places <laughs> where you haven't felt pain before and I also get a lot, quite a lot of out of, um, out of breath when I talk, maybe you notice that. That's another pregnancy feature that has come now. But yeah, talking about the salon, uh, it's really nice. I mean, it's very open, spacious, as you can tell. A lot of windows, a lot of natural light, both from the sides, from the hall, and from above. It's quite a modern feeling uh, over the whole boat. And it, I mean, it is pretty new, it's from 2007. So and I think that's not, nothing strange. Um, so it's not a keel step mast. The mast is standing on the deck, but this is support to keep up the ceiling. Um, so in the salon here, there are, as you can see, two settees, two sofas with storage underneath. So you can lift them up and you have storage underneath here. Water systems up behind. A little bit of more storage behind those two cupboards. Uh, it's a nice comfy city, I'd say, in general. As we move forward towards the um, V-Birth, you can see that we have a dehumidifier here that we haven't plugged in yet, but we will as it gets colder outside because this boat is not insulated, so you get quite affected by the temperatures outside of the boat. If it gets, if it's hot, it gets very quickly warm inside, but the opposite, if it's cold outside, it will get cold in here as well. So the hull isn't that thick, uh, so it's good to have the heat on to keep like a good temperature inside, you will have less condensation and that humidif the humidifier will help a lot too. The boat has a diesel heater installed, um, which is a great feature because you can have heat even when you're out sailing and you're not plugged into shore power. The boat is made out of fiberglass, so it's a plastic boat. And um, one thing that the company has done to, I think, keep the cost down for the whole boat is that they've used laminate on these big surfaces, uh, like um, the yeah the walls you can say here, uh, the cupboards, the floorboards uh, are not made of real wood. It's laminate, but the trimmings are real wood. Welcome to the V-Birth, or probably it would be a guest cabin on this boat, having that big master cabin in the aft. We have a hat head. Toilet with a small shower in here with also storage uh, in a cupboard behind the mirror and underneath the sink. Two closets in here as well, same as in the back. And you have the bed uh, where we keep now as some of a, a little bit of storage for us with uh, some baby stuff that we have started to collect 
we actually we were actually gifted the this protection uh, the car seat uh, from Susanna and Christian the owners super kind um, so this we will have for a baby girl when she goes in the car we have some other stuff as well and you have a good sized bed up here window in the ceiling so you get some good light in here as well Thanks for joining me on the boat tour and you might think or wonder if this could be a boat for us because you know that we're looking for our next boat and home and this uh, Geno San Odyssey has some really nice features that, we told, that I told you about um, but for our next boat and home we're also looking for some features that this boat doesn't have for example this a center cockpit, this one has an aft cockpit also a boat that has insulation um, and, also, and also a boat that is made and designed for cruising all over the world both in the tropics and in high latitudes so our search will continue and uh, we want to thank you guys for all the emails on tip, boat tips that you sent us we've been quite overwhelmed with so many tips uh, so sorry if we haven't been able to answer all of you guys uh, but we've read everything and looked uh, everything up so yeah it's difficult because we can't travel all over the world to see each boat so it's that balance on finding a boat that is super interested and then see if you move forward but thanks for joining us on this video thanks for watching hope you appreciated you and an Adam sail down to Malmö and this little boat tour and a big thanks to Susanna and Christian for letting us stay and live on their boat I mean you guys all our followers you're so nice we've got so many help from you um, so we really appreciate it hope you will watch next week and see you then